Hi everyone, in this video we're talking about the leather generator. Leather has tons of different styles and appearances and is used for everything from car seats and saddles to rocker pants and purses. Here we're going to cover two different ways to do leather generation. The first is a quick and easy way, using pre-made embedded textures, and the other is using the leather generator, in which we procedurally generate our own leather using a substance material. This is similar to the wood generator, however you also have many other detailed controls like scratches, wrinkles, warp, and more. On the screen right now you can see a number of different types of leather styles using the corset base that comes with the Assassin's PBR content pack. So what we're going to do first is start from a blank template and create our own unique style from there. In the content library, you'll find the corset base under underwear and plain base if you purchase the Assassin's pack from the content store. In the underwear section, you'll also find some cool looking corset templates for the pack as well. They can be used in a whole variety of different outfits. Okay, let's take a look at the embedded leather substance material before we get into generating our own. So what you want to do to find the embedded materials is go into the materials of the corset and open up the base material. Here you can choose the leather material and then the leather type. I'll leave it at full grain and go under tweak and adjust the parameters back to default in order to see our rich brown leather base. Just type in 0.5 to reset the value back to normal. Under Transform, I'll set the tiling values back to a default of 1 as well. These are quick and easy presets that are ready to use with a single click. I can go down and see the differences in leather types as well. Cordovan is a less uniform and more natural looking leather. The Crocodile Skin preset contains a tiled crocodile scale pattern, and the Plush preset gives us a cross-stitching pattern that can be used for things like fine furniture or certain types of clothing. So those are your quick and easy to use presets. Let's talk now about the leather generator, which you can find under the same base section. Once we select it, you'll see the default values will present a bit of a complex looking leather, complete with wrinkles and a rough surface appearance. Under the generator section, you can see that it's been set to leather as opposed to wood. Let's remove all the default effects to make it look a bit more neutral. So I'm going to go under Warp and set the value to 0, and do the same thing with the Amount parameter under the Wrinkles section, as well as for the amount of scratches. Now, currently under the Leather section, we have it set as Cow Leather. Let's take a look at the others. If I switch to Snake Leather, there is a very noticeable difference. The light really glitters nicely off the bumpy surface. There is also a Crocodile preset, which has more of a tiled appearance, as well as an ostrich preset, which has a sparsely dimpled surface. The rawhide preset has a much more raw and natural appearance, almost like tree bark. Let's choose the crocodile preset and modify it a bit. First we can adjust the color to something a little lighter. The pattern slider will give slightly different patterns for the crocodile scales. Varnish will add a more slick and well-oiled appearance to the leather, and you'll see stronger specular highlights as a result. The texture slider strengthens the texture by emphasizing the normal values, and you'll see deeper divides between the tiles. Minimizing this value will have the opposite effect and make the appearance look a bit smoother. Under variation, you'll find that with the amount slider higher, you'll see a stronger contrast between the dark and light areas of your leather surface, providing a less artificial look. If I change the hue to a green color, it's easier to see the result of the amount of variation you set for your leather. It's a good idea to change this first before using variation, so you can better see where the differences lie in your final setting. The saturation and lightness are pretty straightforward. Generally you want to keep your lightness pretty low, and saturation really depends on if you want the variations to seem more like darker parts of the leather or else fading areas. The scratches and wrinkle settings both have intensity, amount, and scale parameters, but let's take a quick look at the scratches first. Scratches provide a very nice leather surface detail by adding short scratch indents into the surface. The amount slider is pretty simple. It will define how many scratches will appear. With intensity, you can create deep or shallow scratches in the leather, and scale will really amp up the amount of scratches alongside the original ones you set with the amount slider. Wrinkles are similar, although they're normally a bit longer and often curve. Use the wrinkles intensity slider to create larger surface folds. 
The scratches should normally be minor details, but wrinkles can be used for bigger and smoother surface folds. Next is the warp section. Warping the leather will pull the pattern in certain directions, creating more varied tile sizes and therefore creating a more natural looking and randomized appearance. We'll start with the default uniform preset, and as I go through each of the others, notice how the pattern of the crocodile skin is morphed in different directions to avoid that repetitive look. Rot can be used to create the appearance of mold if you use a lighter color. Normally you'll want to decrease the amount of varnish in this case to give it an older and more worn out look to complement this. You can also use darker colored rot in order to make black pockmark areas which do a better job at simulating something like real crocodile leather. Use the values in the transform section to further randomize the appearance of your crocodile skin pattern. The horizontal and vertical values act as sort of a UV offset where you can find the best combination that works for your item of clothing or accessory. The other values are fairly self-explanatory. You can use the tiling and scale parameters in combination to enlarge or shrink down the crocodile scale sections. Shear horizontal and vertical will basically pull your pattern diagonally in either one of those directions. Finally, as a finishing touch, make sure you go to the root level of your clothing item, in this case our corset, and switch to a higher resolution for output size. It's recommended to keep this resolution low while you're adjusting for faster performance within Character Creator. But when you're ready to export, make sure you switch it to 2048 by 2048 for the most visually appealing results. So that's about it. With the leather generator, you can create all sorts of different unique and natural looking leathers for your props, accessories, and clothing items by using the parameters I've shown in this video. Now it's time to go try it out for yourself.